In the first half of the 19th century, the middle class expanded very rapidly in Wales. Especially in the towns, uh, professional people, people like solicitors and doctors, as well as uh, merchants and shopkeepers, for the first time found themselves with money to spend, with disposable income. One of the things they liked to spend it on was pictures, and especially portraits. Portraits which announced to the world their, their, their status, their, their sense of arrival. Painters were needed to meet the demand, but there were not sufficient customers in any one place to sustain a career specialising in portraits, because towns like Carmarthen and Carnarvon were still quite small. So the painters had to travel from place to place. They worked in one town until the business dried up, and then walked on to the next, carrying their equipment on their backs. The most productive of these itinerant painters was William Roos. For 50 years, from the late 1820s until the 1870s, Roos travelled thousands of miles in Wales, painting mainly portraits from Newport in the southeast to Holyhead in the northwest. William Roos was born in Amluch in 1808, and like most of his contemporary itinerant painters, he seems not to have had any training in an art school or in an academy. But at the age of about 19, in 1827, he was able to paint this striking portrait of a schoolmaster called John Williams. Roos based his portrait on an engraving and hadn't yet started to travel to find work. In fact, he first tried to establish himself in Carnarvon, where he advertised in the local newspaper. He could paint miniature portraits for a guinea and half-length pictures in oils for two guineas. Among the people he painted was the Baptist minister Christmas Evans, though he wasn't paid to do so. Because Christmas Evans was famous throughout Wales, Roos believed that he could make money by selling engravings of his portrait. He taught himself to engrave, and Evans was the first of his many prints. These made his painted portrait popular as well, and he made at least three versions in oil to sell to customers. But Roos soon started to travel beyond Carnarvon. He worked in Penllyn, where he painted the poet Dewi Wynn o Evion. It may have been there that he first met Richard Robert Jones, Dick Abadaro, who, like Roos himself, spent his life wandering from place to place. Dick became a celebrated character because of his ability to understand many languages, and Roos painted at least three portraits and made one drawing of him. In 1836, Roos wrote to his friend Dewey Wynne to say that he had wandered hundreds of miles, including to London, where he spent three months painting amongst the Welsh community. By this time, he'd seen many more pictures by painters trained in academies and art schools, and his style and technique changed as a result. Over the years, he would return several times to London, where he painted figures of national importance. Among the most celebrated was the poet John Jones, Talhayar, who earned his living as an engineer and architect. The two men became friends, and Roos painted Talhayar three times, in fact. Talhayar himself thought that this portrait was the very best thing that uh, Roos had ever done. He wrote a letter to him to, to tell him that. It shows the, the professional man in London, the successful architect and uh, engineer. But in fact, to modernise, the later portrait here of Talhayan as the bard is probably the more attractive picture, the poet, and looking romantically uh, to the side. And in fact, on the back of the canvas, uh, William Roos wrote, Talhayan, the bard in meditation. In Wales, Roos set up his home in 1846 at Towin with Mary, his third wife. The couple would have four children. By this time, Roos's career was at its height, and he was even able to gain a few commissions from gentry patrons, including Robert Hussey de Burr with his daughter Victoria. De Burr was an Irish gentleman living in Carnarvon, but photography was now becoming popular, and the market for painted portraits began to contract in the second half of the century. Roos responded by diversifying. He began to make pastel portraits, which were cheaper than paintings, and also some landscapes. Roos wrote to a friend in 1873 from Cardiganshire to say that he had turned to animal and landscape painting, the only thing in art photography can't do, as he said. There was a market for portraits of prize animals, because, of course, animals wouldn't stand still long enough to be photographed with the long exposure times needed in the period. Hunting pictures were also an important source of income. Among the most splendid portraits Roos ever painted was that of Robert Luther of Acton, which is just over the border in Shropshire with his hounds. Roos also painted subject pictures, including pictures of historical events like the death of Owen Glyndwr, which he sent to the National Eisteddfod Art Competitions. All these historical pictures are lost, 
but one rather mysterious subject picture, apparently of New Year's Eve celebrations, has survived. But by the 1870s, commissions were hard to come by. The last contemporary account of Roos was in 1877, when he was seen at Oswestry, tinting photographs of the church for sale for a few shillings. The next year, he returned to Anglesey, where he died at his family home in Amloch. Some 150 pictures painted by William Roos survive. They tell the story of the people of Wales, the, uh, the ministers and the poets who led public life, but also the private citizens who, in the first half of the 19th century, formed the backbone of the Welsh nation. You can find out more about the life of the man who painted them in my book, William Roos and the Itinerant Life, which is published by Oriel Morne.